morning, friends. Today's scripture reading is from the New Testament, John 6, 1 through 21. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they to so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in the place, and so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, so also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, Gather up the fragments left over, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the sea, got into a boat, and started across the sea to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The sea became rough because a strong wind was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles, they saw Jesus walking on the sea and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land toward which they were going. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. We have a great new message on our signboard. Thanks to David Bennett, our sign guy. He had seen another church's picture of this sign online, and we decided to borrow it. Our sign is getting rave reviews. It says, too hot to keep changing sign. Sin bad. Jesus good. Details inside. Exclamation point. The sign catches people's eyes with its humor and truth, and hopefully with its invitation. Signs can be good. For the next five weeks, our lectionary gospel readings depart from the Gospel of Mark and focus on the sixth chapter of John. In John's gospel, the public ministry of Jesus begins with an event that is identified as the first of his signs turning water into wine. John refers to Jesus' miracles as signs and reports seven sign events found in chapters 2 through 12. Today, we have the joy of reading about two of these. There had been miracle after miracle, and when the people saw the signs of divinity and the actions of Christ, they began to believe and to follow and to be in awe of him. Jesus was an exciting and possibly dangerous leader to follow. He had turned water into wine at the wedding in Cana of Galilee. He had told a Samaritan woman everything she had ever done. He had healed the dying son of a nobleman, and he had healed the man at the pool of Bethesda who had been sick for 38 years. Jesus had performed that last healing miracle on the Sabbath. And he'd really ticked off the Jewish authorities who were seeking to persecute and kill him. Jesus had just had a little conversation with them about who he was and how he had come in his father's name. 
He had told them that if they really trusted in Moses, they would believe him because Moses had written about him. And Jesus had certainly given them signs of his divinity with all these miracles. He had told the nobleman whose son he had healed, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. John 4, 48. Today's passage in John 6 says that when Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, a great multitude followed him because they had seen the signs he had performed on those who were diseased. This multitude of people is the same multitude that Mark was talking about in last week's lectionary passage. Those people who looked like sheep without a shepherd to Jesus. The ones who had stirred the compassion of this Savior who was exhausted emotionally and physically and needed rest. In Mark's telling of this story, the Savior seeking rest in this deserted place had quickly become undeserted. He saw the people and he began teaching them many things. After he had taught all afternoon, the disciples suggested sending all these hungry people away. And Jesus asked them what they had to feed the multitude. Five loaves, two fish. This feeding of the 5,000 miracle is told by all four gospel writers. In John's account, when Jesus saw the multitude coming, he turned to Philip and he started asking about where they'd get food for these people. <laughs> John makes a point of saying that the Passover feast of the Jews was near. Jesus asked Philip where they could go and buy bread for all these people to eat. And the gospel writer makes it clear that this was a test because Jesus knew what he was going to do. Philip started talking about the cost and really the task Jesus was presenting was one that required a miracle. His disciples certainly didn't have enough money to buy bread for a multitude of people. And that much bread might not even be available for purchase anywhere close by. But Simon Peter's brother, Andrew, pointed out that there was a little boy there who had five barley loaves and two fish. The words Greek used in the gospel are the words for small boy and little fish. For what it's worth, I've read that barley loaves would have been tasteless and small. I've read that only the very poor would eat. Andrew pointed out that to Jesus that this small amount of food from this little boy wouldn't be worth much among so many people. But that didn't stop Jesus. He told the disciples to make the people sit down. The men sat down in number about 5,000, it says. We don't know how many women and children might have been there too. And I've read estimates of ten to 20,000 people. The sitting or reclining to eat was a common practice. And in a home, guests would be served by the host who would lean down to serve them. Jesus was the host of this meal, which was to become a feast. He took the loaves, he gave thanks to God for them, distributed them to the disciples, and the bread was passed around. Then he thanked God for the fish, just two very little fish, and they were served to the thousands. Oh, what a miracle! of very little. Jesus made so very much. What had looked so insufficient had become more than enough, for we're told that all who were there were filled, and what was left and gathered up filled twelve baskets. I love that part of the story, that there was more left over than there was to begin with. And remember what Jesus told the nobleman about people needing signs before they would believe. Verse 14 says, Those men, when they had seen the sign that Jesus did, said, This is truly the prophet who has come into the world. They wanted to make Jesus king, and he knew that he would be taken by force. They didn't understand what kind of king he would be, so he went alone to the mountain. That night, when his disciples were out in a boat with a great wind blowing, the sea arose, and there came Jesus walking on the water. And they received him into the boat and were immediately back to land. A miracle after.
after a miracle. These are great accounts of stupendous signs showing the supernatural natural power of the incarnate God. And I will suggest that the message for us in this passage is that we, the Green Bluff Church, are the little boy in this story. In fact, maybe what Jesus was saying to all those people on the grass that day was that the kingdom of God was within them and looked like a little boy who was willing to give what he had. What he had didn't look like much, but in the Savior's hands, it was way more than enough. The little boy's tiny loaves and fishes, when blessed and used by Jesus, somehow ministered to the needs of thousands, and there was a lot left over. Green Bluff is certainly not a big church, and our resources are few. Our expenses, well, they're more than our income, but we're still able to make ends meet and to give to mission. Perhaps, just perhaps, if we keep the faith and put what we have in Jesus' hands, he will do his part and bless us so we can be a big blessing to the community and to the world and see miracle after miracle in our ministry. A little can be a lot when Jesus gets hold of it. What is God calling you to do or to give? I'm not necessarily talking about what you put in the offering plate. I'm talking more this morning about the spiritual gifts that God has given to you like teaching, mercy, healing, prophecy, administration, leadership, pastoral care, and the list goes on. And what about the fruit of the Spirit that has been born in your soul as you have learned to trust and obey God? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. All of these are godly characteristics that can be used by God to minister to those around us. I continue to be excited about God's plans for this little church because in Jesus' hands, with Jesus' help, we can do big things and miracles after miracles still happen. Hallelujah and amen.